The Chicago Bears traded two sixth round picks for two defensive linemen over the weekend. It should provide some valuable depth at the team's biggest weakness, but will it be enough? You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at CoxSports1. You can follow the podcast at Locked On Bears on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and the Locked On Bears YouTube channel, where you can keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. On the show today, we get to know the two newest members of the Chicago Bears defensive line. Daryl Taylor from the Seattle Seahawks, who will learn just how excited he is to be a member of this Bears team in a way that is, is more than you're expecting to hear from Taylor. We'll get into that here in just a moment. And we'll also get to know defensive tackle Chris Williams from the Cleveland Browns, who feels like a little bit more of a desperation trade for Ryan Poles to address a position that they might be getting a little bit desperate at, but we'll figure out exactly where he fits into the equation here. And then we'll wrap up with a look at the defense, or the injuries on a couple of different spots on this team where it could shape your 53-man roster depending on if they're going to put these players on injured reserve or not and whether they do injured reserve before the roster cut down or after the roster cut down, depending on whether they want to be able to bring them back or shut them down for the entire season. We'll kind of get the latest on a couple of different injury situations that will definitely affect how this team operates in week one and at the very least the beginning of the season, if not heck, the entire season at a couple of these particular positions. But I want to start with the new edge rusher, Daryl Taylor, definitely the bigger headline of the two trades. Taylor is a guy who has over 20 sacks in his three-year career. He had nine and a half sacks in 2022 alone, five and a half sacks this past season. It's always kind of been the number three rotational guy in Seattle. They were switching over to a new scheme under Mike McDonald, maybe perhaps not quite as good of a fit in that. And so the Seahawks said, all right, you know, we'll end up part ways with him in exchange for a sixth round pick. Daryl Taylor comes into Chicago then right away. He's going to be at, at worst, you know, your number three defensive end after Montez Sweat and Demarcus Walker, but going to rotate with Demarcus Walker and could kind of be the starter there. We heard Matt Eberflus say over the weekend that they're going to kind of take the hot hand approach. So it'll be a rotation either way, but who's the starter will kind of depend on who's producing more. And of course, uh, Demarcus Walker is going to kick inside a defensive tackle a lot and they'll both be on the field together. So the starter distinction there is going to end up being a little bit more, you know, a gray area, blurred line there. But we also got to know Daryl Taylor this weekend. He came to Chicago. He and Chris Williams both did press conferences to, you know, meet the media and, and meet the city. And something in particular stood out with the way Daryl Ta Taylor addressed the, the media and talked about coming to his team. And so I want you to pay attention to just how excited Daryl Taylor is here. Because he might be, he is, I can guarantee you, the most excited player in the NFL. Just coming here and being around everybody and being in this environment, I'm just excited to be here. You know, uh, it's something new for me. I've never been traded before, never been with another team. So I'm just excited to you know, see new faces, you know, be in a different environment and just get to work. You know, I can already tell this team is very excited to, you know, be doing what we're doing right now. So I'm just excited to be here, you know, whatever the Bears are ready to, you know, put me in any position, I'm excited to be there. I'm just excited to be here and excited to be a part of the organization. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited about it and <clears throat> I'm excited and I'm ready to show, you know, the Bears what I can do. So I'm just excited the Bears wanted to step in and, you know, have me on their team and, you know, have me come do some things for them. So I'm just excited about that. 
Hey, I didn't know that much, but I know we are four three defense, and I'm excited to be moving forward, like going straight all the time. I'm excited about that part. So I'm excited to be, you know, in this defense, and I'm excited to do that too. And being here, I'm excited about that. You know, you know, I'm just excited about learning everything that this defensive scheme has to offer for the defensive line, and I'm just excited about helping everything um, just fall into place. That's why I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. You know, I'm an opportunist, so. I'm just excited to be here, and so I'm excited to see what the Bears have to offer. It was just the, the excitement I had for my teammate, you know. I'm excited. I'm excited about football, you know. Yes, yeah, so I'm excited that I have, you know. I'm saying I didn't always get my shot, you know what I'm saying, but I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited to be able to do that in blue and orange. I'm definitely excited to get the opportunity to play, you know what I'm saying, alongside with that guy, you know what I'm saying. So I'm excited to get to... You know what I'm saying? Rush opposite of him, you know what I'm saying? Race to the quarterback. So that's what it's all about. Um, and I'm just excited to be able to do that here. So for those of you playing along at home, uh, that was 31 excited there from Daryl Taylor. And we love it. We have to love the excitement. Coming into Chicago and being fired up to play with Montez Sweat on this defensive line, I would be excited too. 31 excited in about eight minutes of press conference that we condensed down there and did a super cut of there. But <laughs> you can get a sense. You I, you can also tell that, like, the media picked up on it pretty quickly because I heard Mark Carmen from CHGO ask him a, a question like, hey, so are you excited to play with Montez? What, like, sneaking in the word excited in there? And a couple other media members, too. I don't remember off the top of my head the voices I recognized there. But they started asking him questions about, hey, are you excited about X, Y, or Z? Because that was the uh, the word of the day. From Daryl Taylor. So whatever happens this season, we will remember him for sure as being very excited every single time. His uh, his arrival, though, doesn't bode well for the likes of Dominique Robinson, for the likes of perhaps Daniel Hardy on the defensive line. When you think about as the Bears try and trim down by Tuesday at, at I believe, 3 o'clock. I don't know if it's 3 Central or 3 Eastern. It might be 4 Eastern, 3 Central. Tuesday afternoon is the deadline for teams to go to 53 players. And so when you think about like what the Bears have on the defensive line, Sweat, Demarcus Walker, Daryl Taylor, and Austin Booker are locked in as your four defensive ends that are for sure going to make this team. So then do you, you don't even know, do you keep five or do you just keep those four? I'm guessing they'll probably keep a fifth one just because of how the defensive line rotations are going to go here with Demarcus Walker playing inside a little bit. But then is Dominic Robinson the number five? Is he in? Is Daniel Hardy the number five? Is he in instead? I mean... How do those guys stack up head to head on the depth chart? They also signed Jake Martin this offseason, but he's been hurt all training camp and all preseason, so we just haven't seen him. But could Daryl Taylor could be the one that pushes somebody like Robinson or Daniel Hardy off of the 53 man roster altogether. I do think that despite trading for a defensive end and a defensive tackle here, the Bears could still also go out and add another defensive lineman that was released from or waived from another team's 53-man roster this preseason. Like, the whole point of trading for Taylor and Williams was that you give up a late-round draft pick to make sure you get them, as opposed to if that team was going to cut them, you'd have to compete with every other team and the waiver order as well to decide to try and decide whether or not you'll actually be able to have the opportunity to acquire that player. And in that context, the Chris Williams trade feels a little bit more desperate than the Daryl Taylor trade. Maybe not quite as excited about that one, but we'll kind of get to know what the Bears are getting from their defensive tackle next on Locked on Bears. This episode of Locked on Bears is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, because LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right candidates for your team faster and for free. I'm on LinkedIn. I would bet you're on LinkedIn. And if you're not, a lot of your friends, family members, and coworkers are all a part of LinkedIn. And that's why LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job. But hey, you know, they might be open to the perfect role. In any given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. 
That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So after the Daryl Taylor trade, the Bears followed that up immediately by sending a sixth round pick to the Cleveland Browns for defensive tackle Chris Williams and a seventh round pick. So it becomes a pick swap there, moving down from your sixth round pick to a seventh round pick instead of just, you know, giving up a sixth round pick straight up altogether in the Daryl Taylor trade. And I think that reflects noticeably in the difference in production of the two players. I mean, Taylor had five and a half sacks last season, nine and a half the year before that has, has proven NFL pass rush productivity that the rest of the Bears defensive ends, not named Montez Sweat, just don't have. Chris Williams, on the other hand, has zero career sacks and six career tackles in 13 career games in now entering his fourth season. This is very much a, you know, bottom of the roster type defensive lineman. And I don't mean that to be like, to, to try to try trash talk or anything. It's just over the course of his career, you know, he's been um, number three, number four defensive tackle, rotating off the bench for a few games here and there on the practice squad all of last season for, I think, a couple of different teams. This was not necessarily a player that everyone was clamoring for or that was in line to make this Cleveland Browns roster this season. And so it starts to feel a little bit more like desperation when Ryan Poles trades a six-round pick for Chris Williams and a seventh-round pick. I understand that is a very low trade compensation, right? Swapping a sixth for a seventh is about as low as you can get. I don't know. Is that is that more or less than just giving up a seventh round pick straight up? I mean, I, I, it's sort of nitpicking, right? Or if you do it for like a future seventh round pick, usually it's to me, it feels like the lowest thing you can possibly do, but maybe polls would prefer to swap and keep the same number of picks total and just move that pick farther down. But either way, like Chris Williams is a, a guy who is certainly going to be cut by the Browns and certainly going to hit the open market. And then it's a question of, is this guy so valuable that you have to give up draft pick, even a smallest, smallest amount of draft compensation to make sure that you get him? Like to me, when I look at Chris Williams, like, yes, in their last preseason game against the Vikings, he had two sacks for the Browns. And in their first preseason game against the Packers, he had a couple of quarterback hits in that game as well. Didn't play in their third preseason game on Saturday because he was traded to the Bears before he had a chance to play in this game. So some flashes in the preseason. And he had previously played for Matt Eberflus and the Indianapolis Colts. And his his college head coach at Wagner is the Bears' assistant offensive line coach. So there is a lot of familiarity with this player. And he had a good preseason. So I understand why the Bears would be interested and want to bring him in. Where I'm where I where I struggle with this a little bit and feel a little bit of desperation here is that like, is this such a good player that you have to give up something for him? Like, is he better than any other defensive tackle that's going to get cut this weekend and hit the open market? Like, I get that you want to make sure you have a guy, but, you know, there's going to be other guys that are in a similar boat as Chris Williams. Like, Williams is a young, developing defensive tackle who works hard and has some positional versatility. You know, he he can play nose tackling and play three technique. And he, he can even kick out wide and play some like defensive end, oversized defensive end he has played before over the course of his career. They've used him up and down the defensive line. There's value to who to what he what his skill set is. But when we talk about a guy who's played eight games in three seasons and has six tackles in three seasons, I'm guessing there are going to be 10 players that have had a similar career to Chris Williams that get cut today and tomorrow and hit the open market that the Bears could add to their 53-man roster if they want to. So the only main difference with Chris Williams versus any of those other guys, or the main difference, not the only, but the, the main difference is the familiarity with your coaching staff. And there's a value to that. And is that value swapping a sixth-round pick for a seventh-round pick? Like, maybe I'm maybe I'm overly valuing the, the, the pick swap there. Is, but, like, it feels like when you give up a sixth-round pick for Daryl Taylor, who has 21 sacks, I mean, he had nine and a half sacks a couple seasons ago. Like, He's had more sacks than Demarcus Walker, you know, what I mean? who's a starter on your defensive line. Like, like Taylor will be a borderline starter for you, and that cost you a six round pick. And then you trade a sixth for a seventh to get Chris Williams, who was available all last season on practice squads. You could have signed him off of another team's practice squad last year at any time if you really thought like, oh, 
hey, he's got some familiarity with Eberflus and we want to bring him in. Like, he was available the entire time. He was available at any point the Bears wanted to sign him last season. So, like, that's to me where it's like, was is this some really good player that you'd be sure you want to make sure and get? Or are you feeling a little bit desperate because of where your defensive tackle situation is right now? Where, you know, you've got Dexter and Billings as your starter. You, you like Zach Pickens as your number three. But Zach Pickens is dealing with an injury right now. And Matt Eberflus doesn't have any update for us on the exact severity of that injury. But the way everyone talks about Zach Pickens' injury, it sounds like he's maybe not going to be ready for week one. We don't know if it's, you know, if it's maybe just one game and then it'll be good or if it's an injured reserve type situation. But like you're you're already thin on the defensive line and one of your guys that you do have might not be ready to go this week. So does Ryan Poles, or, or sorry, for week one, which is still like three weeks away. So does Ryan Poles feel like, ah, crap. We have maybe two total healthy defensive tackles that we trust in Javon Dexter and Andrew Billings. We got to get somebody we know we like for sure. And we can't take the risk or the chance of dumpster diving on the open market. Let's go get a trade for a guy that just is something we know we can like here as the newest defensive tackle in here. And maybe if, if Pickens' is, is injury is going to be an issue, you can still keep Byron Cowart or Michael Doom for one of the guys who is in training camp with you. You, know, you can still keep him on your 53-man roster. As I'm recording this on, on Sunday, uh, the Bears have already released undrafted rookie free agent Keith Randolph Jr. from Illinois. The other undrafted rookie free agent defensive tackles are likely soon to follow. And maybe by the time you hear this podcast, they will have made other cuts on the defensive line. And so I apologize for not being able to time travel. But nonetheless, the Bears need, cap, all caps N-E-E, need defensive tackles. And so I can understand Ryan Poles feeling a little bit desperate to have to give up something for one. It just feels a little bit like the Dan Feeney trade last year where you gave up a six-round pick for a guy who, even at the time, we're all like, okay, sh I mean, he's all right, sure. He can play the position that you need bodies at, so I guess. But obviously, like, when Feeney played, he wasn't very good, and they didn't bring him back, and it kind of was, yeah, and, okay, you wasted a six-round pick, not the end of the world, but still it was a bad trade when it was all said and done. And the Chris Williams trade feels a little bit like that, whereas the Daryl Taylor trade feels like pretty good value for a guy who's been a fairly proven pass rusher in three seasons and can certainly help you out with a little bit more confidence than, you know, at that position than what we've got at defensive tackle right now. But Pickens is one of these big injuries that is really going to shape how many players the Bears keep on this 53-man roster on the defensive line. And there's a couple of other spots, too, where we've got injuries that we don't know the exact length and severity of. And depending on how bad that is, that will change how many players the Bears keep and at what positions they keep extra players. So we'll look at what questions we have ahead of 53-man roster cutdown day and that the injuries will ultimately decide for the team next on Locked on Bears. This episode of Locked on Bears is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. We've talked a lot about FanDuel this offseason, but they've got something a little bit different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 on anything and get a free three-week trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and then, of course, you can cancel at any time. You just place that $5 bet on any of your favorite teams. The Bears week one against the Titans, four and a half point favorites in that game. Matt Eberflus's coach of the year odds, Caleb Williams's offensive rookie of the year odds, plus Baseball season is rounding, rounding towards the playoff hunt. You've got soccer and tennis and combat sports and all sorts of goodies between now and September 22nd. So to get your free three-week trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. 53-man roster predictions are always uh, futile. We went through one on Friday after the last preseason game, getting a sense of 
who had played their way in or off of the roster. And of course, trading for two defensive linemen from outside of the organization derails all of that. Anyone's 53-man roster did not include those players. And we're not going to do another full prediction here or anything again, because as I'm recording this, or and, and as you're listening to this, the Bears are making more and more cuts and decisions here that will shape this that we just can't, again, time travel to stay on top of. But the biggest questions for me on the outside are not, okay, performance-wise, did... Dominique Robinson play well enough to make the team or did, you know, X player here play well enough to make the team. It's how injured are the injured players and will those injured players injuries force the bears to keep extra players at other positions or will the bears put those players on injured reserve and then we lose them for the season? Like how will the bears handle these injuries that we just haven't gotten super, super concrete timelines or timetables on their returns. we talked a little bit about, Zach Pickens and his injury it happened last Monday. So it's been a full week. Bears are calling it like not necessarily like a, they're trying to figure out how long term of a thing it's going to be. And Maddie Bivlis wouldn't commit either way to, you know, whether or not even he's going to be ready for week one or not. But I think it's being talked about in, you know, week terms as like W E E K in terms of weeks, as opposed to in terms of days that Pickens might be out. And so that's what leads to the Chris Williams trade. Cause if Zach Pickens is out, you got Dexter Billings and Chris Williams. If Pickens is going to miss, let's, let's throw a hypothetical out here with no purely speculation. I'm just picking a number. Let's say he's going to miss a month. going to miss four, the first four games of the season for whatever reason. You know, okay. Then you might not put him on injured reserve just yet. Cause he could be back before a full short-term injured reserve stint. So you keep him on the roster, but he's still going to take up a roster spot while injured. So then you'd have to take up a fifth defensive tackle. So is that how Byron Cowart makes the team? So you can have four healthy defensive tackles, plus have Demarcus Walker and other guys kick inside. Or do they even say, oh, screw it. We'll bring in another outside player, cut Cowart and do him four and have it be Dexter Billings, Pickens, Chris Williams, and then a fifth outside player who's brought in off the street. But that outside player might not be locked in, ready to go week one. At least Chris Williams has some time to get reacclimated with Matt Eberflus and has the background knowledge of like, oh yeah, I've played in this defense for these coaches before. So there's some familiarity there that should make that transition easier. But like Pickens is going to be counted on to be their top backup as both the nose and three technique defensive tackle. So like, this is a big deal. And they could choose, you know, if they want to, if they want to put him on a short-term injured reserve, then he has to count on your initial 53-man roster. That, that's the big decision here. So if you put someone on injured reserve before the Tuesday deadline, you know, at, at Tuesday afternoon, you have to submit a roster to the NFL that says, here's the 53 players we're taking. If you put someone in, on injured reserve before that time, they are out for the rest of the season and cannot be reactivated off of injured reserve. If you wait until you submit your 53-man roster and say, hey, this player is on our 53-man roster, he's a part of our active team, the very next day, you can put him on injured reserve and then designate him for return to make it the short-term injured reserve and have him only be out, you know, the, however many weeks he needs to be out. And then he won't count on your roster then, but he has to count on your initial roster. So you have to cut to 53 players with that injured player counting as one of those 53 get through the deadline, then he can go on injured reserve, free up his spot, and then you can add someone back to get back to 53 after you got to your initial 53. And so that's where the duration of the Pickens injury is going to be interesting. It sounds like, again, based on the way people are talking about it, it's not going to be a season-ending injury, I don't think. It seems to me like he's going to make the 50, they're not going to put him on an injured reserve before the 53-man roster deadline. I think it's a question of, Yes, he's going to for sure make the team, but then then does he go on short-term injured reserve after that, or is he only going to miss you know a game or two, and so the short-term injured reserve would keep him out longer than he would need to be out? So then you know you keep an extra body that way. That's the real question for me with him. It's the same type of conversation with Larry Borum on the offensive line, where he is your top swing tackle. Clearly their first choice off the bench behind Braxton Jones and Darnell Wright. He is dealing with an injury that he suffered in the last preseason game. The Bears haven't been able to really provide a concrete timetable. It was a, you know, looked like an ankle lower leg kind of thing that he suffered and was carted off with. Is that a one month thing? Is that a season ending thing? We still don't have a super strong sense of that. 
But the Bears also then have other offensive line questions. And it's the same conversation. Do you put him on injured reserve before the cutdown deadline? So he's for sure just shut him down for the whole season. Do you keep him on the initial 53 to, to get him through and then put him on injured reserve and replace him after the fact? And then it can be a short-term injured reserve. Or is this a one or two week thing where you stick with him injured, but not an injured reserve, just taking up that roster spot as someone who's not healthy or ready to go just yet. Because you look around the rest of the offensive line, Ryan Bates is also injured at center. And he's also in this conversation a little bit. He, he might not be ready for week one. It sounds like, you know, he could, his is definitely going to be on the shorter term side. So probably not an injured reserve candidate, but if he's not ready for week one, you need a backup center. So that would leave Doug Kramer or, or Jerome Carvin or kind of your only other center options currently on the roster, unless you go out and add someone from another team's 53-man roster like they did with Dan Feeney last year via trade, but I'm not expecting an offensive line trade for a center at the very least. With Borum being injured, Matt Eberflus pretty publicly endorsed Matt Pryor as a backup who's for sure going to make this 53-man roster. He endorsed him as someone who they trust to play left tackle, to trust to play left guard, they trust to play right guard, they trust to play right tackle. So if Borum's going to miss time, Matt Pryor will be your new swing tackle and your new swing offensive line. Essentially, Matt Pryor is your sixth man in this basketball lineup here. If He can play every position but center. So if any of your tackles or guards get hurt, Matt Pryor, well, well, as long as Larry Borum is injured, Matt Pryor will be your first guy off the bench. So then do they keep another guard if they're going to trust Matt Pryor to be the tackle? You know, is that the way that Bill Murray or Jatari Carter makes the 53-man roster? Or Jake Curhan, your offense, your, your backup right tackle who can play some guard? Like, that, that's what's going to be most interesting to me is like the duration of those injuries and whether or not they put Borum on injured reserve and create a spot that way or whether they write it out. And plus, you've got, you know, Karana Magaji is going to be on your roster and is healthy enough to practice at least, but you wouldn't necessarily trust him to go into the game. So like, you know, he's for sure going to make this team. So if you think about like where this offensive line is, the number of guys that make this 53-man roster, you got your five starters, Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins, Coleman Shelton, Nate Davis, Dar Darnell Wright. Then you've got Matt Pryor is your new six offensive lineman, as long as Larry Borm's hurt. Karan Amagaji is definitely making this team. And Ryan Bates is definitely making this team. So that's eight. So then if you keep Larry Borum, if he's healthy enough to stay on the roster, he would be nine. So then do you keep a 10th by keeping one of the other guards? Or do you just stick with those nine? Or do you put Larry Borum on injured reserve and then just leave it to eight with Pryor, Amagaji, and Bates as your three backups there? Depends on how healthy Bates is, because Bates can play guard or center, and Pryor can be can play tackle or guard. So those two could kind of handle the five backup spots while Amagaji develops. But if Bates is also going to miss a few weeks and Borm's missing time, like th these are the kind of moving parts that Ryan Poles is juggling here and waiting for the proper updates from his training staff to know when and how long we can expect these players to be out and when they can ultimately come back and provide depth on this team. The last spot that's a real concern here. It's not one that's going to be top of mind for everybody, but long snapper. Patrick Scales has been, been out for like two or three weeks with an injury. He didn't snap in the preseason at all, I don't think. They had Cameron Lyons on the roster, a, a former undrafted free agent who had been spent some time with the New York Giants. Uh, but the Bears brought him through and, and ultimately you know had him a part of this preseason. But I don't think they're going to necessarily keep you know two long snappers on – the, the roster. And at some point during the, during this fall, they had, they had waived him and then brought him back when, when scales had been healthy and then he got hurt again. They brought back camera lines, but like you can't keep two long snappers on the 53 man roster. So it's a question of, you know, do you keep scales and does he end up going on injured reserve or is he going to be healthy enough to play week one? Like we kind of take for granted the consistency of having a really good long snapper or just a, a consistent long snapper that you never have to think about. You never have to worry about. You just know the snaps are going to be there. It's not going to mess up a punt or a kick. If, if a punt or a kick is going to be shanked, it's because of the holder, the kicker, or the punter, not the long snapper when Patrick Scales is in there. Cameron Lyons, I didn't think was quite as solid, but I didn't watch a lot of long snapper tape. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, the, the spin rate on Lyons long snaps were just, you know, we're, we're horrible. But I remember a couple snaps here, there being a little bit outside of the frame, but it's a small sample size in the preseason anyway, and it's long snapping, whatever. But like, it's another spot of, do they keep scales on the initial 53, then put him on injured reserve and then re-sign someone like Lions as a short-term fill-in? Or do they, 
it scales his injuries serious and they put him on injured reserve for the full season and shut him down and just keep lines? Or do they take another long snapper from somewhere outside the organization? That's why 53-man roster predictions are impossible, but still something that's a fun and valuable exercise. I'm glad we went through it on Friday after the preseason game. I'm not, we're not going to do it again before the Tuesday deadline, but we will break down all the other big moves the Bears make on this initial roster right here on the Lockdown Bears podcast. So make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts because that's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you're looking for a second listen, go check out Locked On Fantasy Football. We're your team every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, and that includes your fantasy football team, where you can get daily insight to the best fantasy draft strategies and, of course, waiver wire pickups and lineup decisions throughout the season to help you win your league. You can find Locked On Fantasy Football on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this Locked On Bears podcast right now. Then come on back tomorrow, make us your first listen here once again, and you'll always be left with another opportunity to be excited like Daryl Taylor and bear down.